Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Podcast. We have our final NBA Division Futures bets here for you guys. As always, got the residential NBA pro better Kareem K and Eddie Walls of Right Angle Sports as well. We are going to be looking at this division here, fellas, uh, talking about who's going to win it, maybe some win totals, if there's anybody in here that we like for the conference as well. I do want to remind you guys, like and subscribe, because we have all of the other divisions up for you at this point as well. You can check out every single futures bet that we put out there, each of these yeah. teams across the league. Let's jump right into this, kicking things off here, Kareem, with Memphis, and talk about the Grizzlies, which is going to be interesting because we don't know how good they'll be the first 25 games. Let me ask you that question to kick off your uh, your, your take on, on the Grizzlies and any bets you have. How good will they be for the first 25 games? Historically, they've been decent without Ja. Actually, quite good um, and better than expected. It's hard to know if with that sample size, if it's just variance or if it's meaningful. I think they'll probably be a couple points worse than they would be um, with Ja, but I wouldn't overreact to that too much. So what is there anything that you do with them from a, a betting st- standpoint right now, or do you actually just maybe abstain mm-hmm. until you see him back on the court? I think I knock him down a couple a couple points. Eddie has a, probably a good idea on what he, do, he would do with their totals. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, he's, he's an extreme over um, to a total. I don't think that he's worth much to the spread, actually. I am a very anti-jaw guy. Um, I normally bet on them when he's not in the lineup. Um, I, I just think that He is very, very ball dependent. Um, He does not like to pass as much as people think. Takes a lot of bad shots. The shot selection is pretty bad, Um, but he takes a lot of them. And I mean, he can jump out of the gym, so he can do a lot of things when he drives. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy with Memphis this year. I like everything that they did. I like the smart addition, getting rid of Brooks, who I think was a deterrent to the team. Uh, Adams is back healthy. Um, They have a top five coach, in my opinion actually rather easily probably top three um (laughs) i like everything that he does um i think bain is extremely underrated in the marketplace um overall i like everything about him i can't touch their regular season win total it's pretty much exactly where i meant where i where i liked it at i do think that uh, the division odds for them to win is pretty valuable i'm I, i don't really look at that kind of stuff but i was shocked to see um, that you could get a good price on them. Um, I think that they're definitely the best team in the division when it comes to coaching, uh, player unity, and I, I like everything that Smart brings to this offense. I'm in charge of this defense. Uh, they're much more defensive than they've ever been before. Um, I mm-hmm. think that they can win a lot of games uh, just based on experience, continuity, mm-hmm. and coaching um, with that lineup. There has to be something about going from Dylan Brooks to Marcus Smart, who are both really good defenders, but one is actually less annoying than the other right. one, which is wild because Boston fans were probably a little bit annoyed with Smart at times. But what, what do you what do you do with this team in terms of the wins or even the plus money that you get for still betting on them to win the division? I just think there's so much on, uh, and as we just get said to talk about the Southwest Division, there this division, in my opinion, has maybe the most unpredictability out of any division. Like all of these teams have some major question marks, and I would say have pretty wide ranges of of potential outcomes. You don't know how smart is going to is going to be with a new team. There were, there have been murmurs about like his his health and his lateral movement ability that I as a as a huge Marcus Smart Celtics fan, like I love him and he he was not as good of a defender last year as he's been historically. So, we don't know how that team is going to respond to all the shit around Ja that that there seems to be some traces of discomfort there. I just I don't really want to yeah. take a stance on this team before I see some more results in the regular season. I agree. I, I'm I'm really disappointed in David Big Body Roddy. Uh, he has shown us nothing to this point in the playoffs last year, even in preseason or or in the summer league as well, which is super mm-hmm. disappointing, man. And stop waiting for Kenny Lofton Jr. to be a real NBA player. He's like nice, but not he's not a, a, a minutes guy. My thing with them, too, is I just lean under because Tyus Jones isn't on this team anymore. I just think that's so wildly important. I think if you're talking about, like, a top 16 point guard of the NBA who was a backup for his whole career, you know, not being there anymore, I just think he was such a key reason that they were, in one season, 25-6 and or whatever without Ja that one season that he missed a bunch, right? I think Tyus Jones is too highly connected to that for him to not be there, right? That's a critical element in that and one that I think 
like people probably aren't talking about enough. Also, Clark was a, like their bench has always been great, and losing him and losing Clark with with his Achilles for yeah. the, at least the first stretch of the season, I think are going to be pretty. You know, they're, they're enough to keep me off the over, even though my numbers show some value to the over in the in the win market. Yeah, I love Brandon Clark too, man. That's it. your Achilles when you're key you know attribute is that you jump really high and get boards is, is going to be yep. really tough for him maybe he'll just get stronger but let's move on to the new orleans fighting zions i mean pelicans and see what we do with them uh, in terms of either winning this division at around plus 240 200 you can still get them there they're about 44 and a half wins right in that cluster of teams that are all between 44 and 45 and a half let me kick it off with you eddie and let you start with the, the, the pellies unless you you have something strong for that can you can you give us your Zion take, Eddie? Perfect. Yeah, he, he doesn't really care about basketball. I mean, it's <laughs> very obvious to me. I mean, I mean, you can say whatever you want. He's one of the most talented players I've ever seen, but he really doesn't care about being on the court. I mean, if you are sitting out an entire season with a hamstring injury while gaining tremendous amounts of weight and you know dating porn stars. Um, I just can't see that this guy has the work ethic that really convinces me that he loves to play basketball. He has all the talent in the world. I mean, there's plenty of people that are in the same exact boat. He's just on a national stage in the biggest spotlight ever. I mean, I just, I, he's a very, very hard player to say, yeah, he's going to play 80 games. That's crazy talk. Like, he hasn't played 80 games in three seasons now. So, no. how do you back this team? I mean, on an over on a regular season win total, projecting that he's going to play. I don't see it happening. Um, you can't. Yeah, I mean, they have an incredible coach. He gets the most out of his players. I think Ingram is extremely underrated. Um, I think Balachunas is fine. I mean, they have a good roster, but it all is dependent on one guy who hasn't shown me the ability to stay on the court or any really like urge urgency from him to stay on the court and stay healthy throughout a year. So. Um, they're, they were be a pass for me. Yeah, they were better like in underlying numbers than their record last year. They're forty seven wins expected. I also, I just think <laughs> in the ten percent of outcomes where Zion plays a full season, I, I think there's val there's again a huge range with this team. Uh, I bet them to be the number one seed at thirty to one because I think there's more than a three percent chance that that happens. I also think I love one player we haven't talked about who I think is a, is very much a winning player in this league is Herb Jones. Okay, I, I think he's a really dynamic defensive player. His steal rate is very high. I bet him forty two to one to have the most steals. And also, like, there's a market that you can get if if you have the accounts uh, on DraftKings longest win streak. I think that if they're a team that if again if you get a healthy stretch of Zion, this is a very capable team and at 30 to one to have the longest win streak i want to kind of capture some of their volatility there as well that said to eddie's point i'm not interested in backing a flat money over on this team there's a lot that could go sideways you know it, it's mccollum's getting older Don Junis is getting older they really need zion and that's a tough spot to be i mean their entire roster is built up of so many good players it's just kind of sad that they're all held hostage by one guy. I mean, you have Herb Jones, Brandon Ingram, Jose Alvarado <laughs> is extremely dynamic. Najee Marshall can shoot and do quite a lot. Yes. And I actually think that Trey Murphy is one of the most underrated players in the entire league. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's all held together by one guy who makes all the money so they can't even move him. I mean, Larry Nance is on that team too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just crazy. I mean, so yeah, it's kind of a shame if they don't if they don't do it this year. I say you have to tear it down and get rid of Williamson and build from within. I mean, you have aging superstars who make a lot of money as well. But I mean, if he if he goes out there and plays thirty two games a year, what are you doing with this roster for the next decade? I mean, it's it's just a dead it's a dead team because of him. So that's that's the name of the game uh for sure they they couldn't move him before this season like this this is the season right this is when you have one more chance because if you move him now you you giving him up at the one chance one more time that he has this one more moment where it's like he could jump off now right and af after this one then you're done it's like fool me once shame on you fool me six times at that point i gotta be out on this one with with, with him and like you said he, he holds them hostage and and i was just gonna only just add to the point that you made kareem which is like there's so much volatility with them 
if you yeah. wanted to throw a sprinkle something on them, like <laughs> do it for something big. Don't just go for this this win total. Like hit them to win the West or something ridiculous. Or like you said, the yeah. one seed is a way better bet than even that. And having to worry about them going through the playoffs because one mm-hmm. 35 game stretch of actually having their whole team and winning 25 games could be something that puts them in position. Right? Or even the, I don't want to bet them to win the, the division, division, even if it's plus 200 right. or we're like, I don't want that. But nope. I don't think there's any value. And like, I, I think there's the plus 200 chance that Zion plays 60 games. So like, yeah. what am I doing betting the he's division? He's done that once. Yeah. He's played 60 games once. So yeah. Uh, next up in this wonderful division, like you said, with it, all its volatility, <laughs> Maybe the most wide range, like the widest range of potential outcomes that I can think of right now is on the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I know that they have a, like one of the just most stable anchors that you'll ever have in an NBA franchise in Luka, but they also have one of the most debilitating anchor wrecking players in, to a franchise in the history of the game in Kyrie. And they're relying on both of them to take them to any kind of glory that they could find this season. So you're shaking your head vigorously enough to make me want to start with you, Kareem, about Mavericks. I think this team is going to be bad. Yeah. Like, I think this is one of the most, oh, I would say overrated teams right now. I'm betting they're under 44 and a half. Who is the third best player on this team? Who is even the starting five? Kyrie has not been a, a, pl- a positive, like, I'm going to add value in, in, to a team for a stretch of the season in a long time. I think this is a dysfunctional team. Jason Kidd, you got the stories of him making the Bucks run wind sprints after after games and like because one of the guys didn't buy an iPhone. It's like it it just is dis it's dysfunctional. Uh and the roster, like you're starting Derek Lively, who averaged six points per game in college huh. last year, and Omax Prosper, who just snuck into the first round of the draft. I don't understand what they're doing. Uh, I think this I, Luca is getting more and more technicals every year. He <laughs> seems frustrated by the environment. I think something needs to change with this team and their decision to go all in on on Kyrie. I think was a horrible decision. Him and Luca's skills are very overlapping. I'm out on them. Yeah, well said. Um, I will say that if they had a good coach. Um, I mean, they have, you know, they have probably the best owner in the NBA. So it really doesn't make a sense that he goes out on a limb and keeps Kevin Kidd come back, who is obviously one of the most dysfunctional coaches I've ever seen. Um, he does absolutely nothing right. I also think from a front office standpoint, I don't understand why they just get rid of all the centers, just go out there and play small ball, let Kyrie, Luca feed off of each other and just get wide open shots to other people. Um, and kind of, you know, open up spacing. But they're so stupid that they're going to start a center that 19 years old that averaged six points, you just said. Uh, they're <laughs> they're trying, they're all in on trying to get Capella, which makes absolutely no sense. I, I mean, the whole entire team is just a wreck. I mean, I don't understand anything that they do. They have money for free agency. They go out and get Grant Williams. Well, I'm not hating Grant Williams, but I mean, if you're going to spend that kind of money, go out and get you know, a pretty goddamn decent player. I mean, I, I think that he's fine. It's just not somebody that I'm going out and actively trying to find in free agency. I am with you. I'm selling them. Um, if they had any other coach and they got rid of the five position altogether, I'd be super interested in them. But for right now, they just have a lot of weird pieces on this team. I mean, the fact <laughs> that Seth Curry is on this team, it, it doesn't make any sense. The fact that they didn't move Tim Hardaway doesn't make any sense. Why do you have more shooters when you have Luca and and Kyrie and you're not and you're still gonna not have any spacing because of what you're doing floor wise? It just doesn't add up to me. Um, it's kind of sad too because I think the both of these guys are super dynamic. They have plenty of time left to show us that um, them playing together just overlaps. It doesn't create any space. It, it's a bad fit. So yeah, they got rid of Finney Smith, who is DFS. Just a, a great, the, a great wing defender who could shoot open threes. It, like, it, it's tough, man. I, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. They're still, they're still in between what they've been, which is always having a ton of like really strong defenders around Luca that can shoot threes, and then and and like a, and rim running centers who can at least like defend in the post. 
and they're they're in between that and then like moving on to some more floor spacing with like Josh Green maybe being in the lineup more often, which is just way less defense and way more offense for them and athleticism. <laughs> what do you think happens first, basically? Like Grant Williams gets punched in practice by a teammate. Kyrie mm-hmm. Irving leaves the team for an undisclosed reason for an undisclosed amount of time. Luca uh-huh. gets his ninth technical in the first month of the season. Like all of those could happen at the same time as each other. So there's just so many outs where this just blows up wildly. Uh, do, do you turn that into any long-term bets for them, guys, or is this just a, a fade them in the season during the regular season play? You forgot them getting Harden. That would be like the most head scratching thing. <laughs> Right. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't like to. I don't like to bet on like down. You know, like uh, <laughs> on the downside of uh, people's lives and stuff like that. But yeah, I. I don't know. I. I just. I really hope that. Uh, I really hope that they just get rid of the five and they become and they become a good over and kind of become fun to watch. Because yeah. right now it's just kind of a disaster. Agreed. I bet. I bet on them to miss the playoffs at plus one seventy. Still got plus money on that. That's awesome. Yeah, you can say you can still take no for plus one seventy around that uh, on Caesars right now. So, uh, moving on to the next team in this division, we've got two fun Texas squads left. I'll let you choose, Eddie. Would you rather talk about the Rockets or the Spurs first? Probably the I Spurs, think, right? I think the Spurs are way more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're a very confusing team because it all it all hinges on a guy that I really haven't had a chance to see like a full sample size of. I'm excited to see it. Um, I mean, Wemby, the Wemby craze is going to be absolutely nuts, you know, yeah. good or bad. It can go either way. It's just going to be nuts regardless. But I really like this team's roster from a scoring perspective. If he gives them the defense, um, I mean, you know, that he's supposed to, which it looks on paper and on film, like, my God, I mean, he might be the next coming of, you know, who knows the best shot blocker and the most dynamic player that we've seen in a long time. Um, I think that their upside is pretty big. I like their roster. I like what they've done. I just don't think there's a lot of defense outside of him. They're still going to be a very, very hard team to play unders on. I don't care what you say. Pop plays pretty, pretty fast pace. Uh, this bench has no defense, and you're going to have so you're going to have Sochan, Graham, Johnson, Jones. I mean, it's a lot of scoring and not a lot of D. So, um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Kareem? You like this team? I don't know what to. I think to your point, you talk about a division of volatility. Wemby, I could see him being a player that like doesn't really make huge impact his rookie year, and it's just too much of a project. And I could see him being I just know. a transcendent player. Like this dude is getting like I'm looking at his stat lines in the preseason, and he's playing a half, and he's going like twenty five four with three blocks, like that. I think he could be like it is within the range of outcomes that he's just transcendent. And I actually am taking a little long shot at 80 to one for them to win the division because I think there's like at least a a three to five percent chance that Dallas sucks. Zion does Zion shit. Memphis, you get a Jaron Jackson injury. And then, like, maybe I think this, if Wenby is that good, he could elevate them to 40 wins and maybe they're in the mix like it's worth a shot for me uh i to take at 40 wins or t- playoffs to, to win the division at 80 to one I, i'm not but the, i want the big i want that big number on this team to capture the volatility of this division and the the possibility that i'm cheering for Wemby this elite on fire uh and to, like the past year you know they were 16 expected wins last year but they weren't ever trying you know they even Vassell who's one of their few positive impact players they're just sitting him every game almost because they wanted to be in the mix so I think there's maybe unrealized upside with this team on like a base level projection I only have them for 26 wins Uh but again I don't I don't think it's out of the picture that Wemby elevates their offense a ton and also elevates their D a ton. I'm glad you brought it up one point because we're allowed to have fun with betting too. So like the, the the notion that you just want to have a piece of the craze that could be the greatest NBA prospect ever in the league is in, in like not only greatest, but just unforeseen, just never seen before the like of anything like him. Yeah, that's one that's of better- one forever. Yeah. Like, you want to go see something you've never seen before in sports every time that you watch sports. And so if you're going to put a little bit on it to like have a little bit of action tied to that being that actual legitimate potential, 
I support you a hundred percent on that for sure with, with the 80 to one on, on the division. So, uh, yeah, the, the last thing I would say too, is like, I've watched a lot of Wemby and when he, it's not just the numbers, there is the qualitative aspect of like, you watch what he does and you're like, you <laughs> saw the clip of Thomas Bryant's face when Wemby dunked from outside the circle with just his arm. And Thomas Bryant was like, oh, I got this rebound. And he's like, I've, I, I don't know how to prepare for that. I've never seen I'm, that before I'm in my life. I'm just sending Eddie and Travis, every time they play a preseason game, I'm sending Eddie and Travis these these random Twitter clips of him just doing ridiculous things. There's yeah. a few per game. But yeah, I, so, yeah. I I really don't think, 80 to 1's not just like, oh, this is fun. Like, I think it's actually, the, yeah. I think, if you think there's a 2% chance they win the division, it's a good bet. And That's what I'm saying. I don't, I, I think it's a good bet. Yeah, it's it's not just about the fun, but what I'm saying is like you're you're getting in on the potential like craze yeah. that is their ceiling. Yeah, we would be great. We support yeah. it. So with 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 the Rockettes, uh, I mean, we we yeah. finally I think we're, we've talked about a lot of poor coaching, oh, okay. and I think we're about to talk about a pretty good coach yeah. in his first year with a team that's got a lot of had a lot of nonsense, um, and it's something that he doesn't put up with, as you know, being a Celtics fan, Kareem. Eddie, what do you okay. do with the Miami Heat as our final team that we bring up in? in Houston Meaning, Rockets. What did I say? He, he said Miami. Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Houston Rockets. My bad. Hey, no, you're fine. Um, Similar. I, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually selling the Rockets pretty hard. Um, I, I, I like Adoka just as everybody else does, but he has a lot of projects on this team. And, I mean, it, it, he's going to have to turn... Sengen, who is kind of maybe a franchise player into a defensive center, that's going to take some time, okay? I mean, like, that is not an easy task. He's going to have to turn Ari Smith into a player that he can use on a night-to-night basis. He's all about defense, which is fine. He just doesn't have the pieces for it right off the bat. Um, I think that, I, I mean, like, I understand everything that they're doing from a front half a standpoint. They're trying to do something that works over a long haul um, and be, you know, building from defense out. Um, The problem is, is that he's going to have to score in the West. Um, I don't know if he has enough scoring to do that. And you also have a major head case in Dylan Brooks um, that's going to butt heads with a lot of people. I think that he plays well into this system. I think that Thompson, the rookie that they got, I think he plays well into this system. But overall, I don't think that there's a lot of talent on this team. There's a lot more projects than people possibly realize. And it's very, very young. This is like a three to four, five year rebuild. Um, and they've got the right guy to do it for sure. But in year one, I mean, I really tinkered with playing under the regular season win total, even as low as it was. Um, so that should just kind of tell you where I'm at. But you you didn't hit that necessarily, yeah, Eddie. You're still staying away from them. I just I mean, it's really low. It's hard to play regular season win yeah. total that low. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. like I really considered it. So for yeah. me to consider playing an RSW around 27, 28 wins, that's a really really bad team. Um, so I mean, it's just a long rebuild. Um, well, yeah. I I do think that there's potential that they're a very good ATS team. Um, I just don't see there being a lot of wins, and you know these kind of teams where you're trying new things, experimenting, it's tough to back those teams on a night to night basis. So. Yeah. Where do you go yeah, with them? Kareem? I agree with everything Eddie said. I think the Van Vliet edition is really interesting to me. And yeah. I, I don't, I think maybe he's just like the locker room leader and like leader of the team, helping these guys mature, but he's honestly past his prime. And there's a world in which he takes opportunities from their most dynamic player, Jalen Green. So I, I, I'm, I could see a Jabari Smith jump, and also to your point, Shangun doesn't seem like a good fit. I don't know. I don't know what's going to go happen with their bench. It doesn't seem very good. I mean, Eason is a good player, but it's beyond him. I don't. I don't know what's happening. They it, got it's Depot just, now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I, know. I, I, would, yes. I would just I would just throw Cam Whitmore out there and just see what I got because I think he might be the biggest steal in the draft. It doesn't seem like he's he's pushed pretty far yeah. down the depth chart, but it's like, why you need to get but more? Like, are any of these guys in there? Are any of these guys efficient scorers? Like, no. no, right? Like, none no. of that. Amen is inefficient. Whitmore is going to be inefficient when he's not dunking the ball. It's hard to. See. It's just. I think it's to Eddie's point, it's going to take some time. So I'm not playing anything with them. 
think Fair. they could be good as an underdog. Um, yeah, especially with teams who, who might o- overlook them on short rest. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't have conviction on this team one way or another just yet. Got you. Yeah, all good. I mean, that that is going to be an interesting division. I'm glad we we talked about them last because we have a, a lot of things in the air for this uh, this division here in the Southwest. But guys, I really appreciate you helping out with uh, with everything here for these division videos. Definitely want to make sure you guys are checking all of those out. Like and subscribe. Rate the show if you would at Eddie Walls there uh, and and not at Eddie Walls. That's not his Twitter handle. We'll have that up for you. But that is Eddie Walls of Right Angle Sports and Kareem K. Appreciate you guys. So until we do talk to you next. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Josh.